Hello, my name is Wes, and this is going to be my video cast to everybody that's watching for my physics class. Um, my name is Wesley Hicks, and my instructor is Corey Rombach. I believe I need to say that, so there we go. Um, so this is why physics is important, and I think this kind of pertains to what field you're really going into. Um, me personally, I'm going for game design. Why is physics important for game design? Well, there's a lot of reasons. One, because everything that you play, you do, any kind of game you've ever played in your life, has some form of physics in it. And, you know, that dictates what you can do in the game. What are the rules set? What's going to happen? How do you win? Um, in games like basketball and football, you see physics a lot. You see physics when you have someone going and they're dribbling the ball. When they dribble that ball, depending on how hard they push down on the ball, is going to be how fast it comes back up, how hard it goes against the ground, how fast the ball keeps dribbling. Why, if someone misses the ball, doesn't it just keep going? There has to be some form of some rules set in play for the game. When you're playing outside of the visual world or you know the computer world, we have gravity. So gravity is what dictates what's going to happen with that certain ball. So if someone takes the ball and tries to shoot it, you know that gravity is what's pushing the ball back down. So he just doesn't leave the ball and it just keeps going. Something's pushing it back down. So depending on that particular player's certain strength and speed in which he throws the ball to the hoop, you know that the ball is going to go through the air and towards the rim. Unless he's horrible, then it may go past it or <laughs> may hit a car or a small child or something. We're not sure, but something happened with the ball. So that kind of gives you an idea of like, why physics is there. In earlier games, we saw physics all the time. Uh, games like Pac-Man and Pong. Pong is a big one. But Pac-Man, for instance, you have your little character and your goal is to eat all these little white dots without getting spotted by the ghost people. And Pac-Man runs into a lot of walls. He runs into a wall, then you have to turn and go another way, and run into that wall, and then keep going and try to get away from all these people. So we have these things set in place for the walls. That means that Pac-Man cannot go through them. He has to go around them or you know to the side somewhere. He cannot go through that wall that he has right there. So that kind of gives a little perspective of physics. Physics is telling us that there's something there. He's hitting it, but he's not going past it, so he has to go around. But there's also things in the middle of the screen, these little gateways that port Pac-Man. If he goes through one, he pops back in, comes the other side. So that's the way physics is played. It shows that he's going one place, and he can keep going, and then he just kind of reverses and comes back out the other way. So it's kind of like a loop, basically, that we don't see, like a little portal. But we see how physics is related to the game. Something else, I put this picture in here just kinda kinda shows someone that's trying to jump to the moon. Like I said before, when we're doing like basketball or any kind of sports outside of the computer world, we can judge of you know how high someone's gonna jump because of gravity. There's gonna gravity's gonna be portioned back down. But in some games, where you don't have gravity, you can take gravity out. You can just jump to the moon. So, this is a kind of cool picture. I thought that she looks like she's trying to jump to the moon. She's almost there, though. Maybe a couple ten years. But the big thing that I wanted to get on, and as far as games go, is pretty much first-person shooters. First-person shooters uses a lot of physics, um, especially like games like Halo that kind of come up right now. Um, Halo depicts on a lot of things. One, the guns that you use where the rocket will go. If you shoot a rocket under somebody while they're in the air, that's going to blast that person up in the air so they can actually jump higher. You can already jump high. You're in you know, certain different worlds, different planets, and you can jump really high, you can jump really far. So gravity takes in, but they change it, they alter it. So it's not like gravity that we would have on Earth. They have special suits and everything so they can jump a lot higher. The guns that they use even ricochet. You can ricochet off the wall, 
off the wall or off the um, floor, off certain different walls, off the ceiling, and you can actually hit people that way. One of the biggest things with Halo is that they had frag grenades, and frag grenades would actually allow you to throw the grenade. It would bounce off the floor or off the wall or ceiling or wherever you threw it, and it could get behind corners where you, the enemy was there, but you couldn't see him. Um, one video that I'm going to show you kind of takes into control of that. Let's turn that off. But you can see he's going through, he's throwing a grenade, and people blow up. Physics is going to tell us that when he throws that grenade and it blows up, how, how big the um, explosion is going to be, how far it's going to launch the certain people with the force that's coming off of the grenade. Um, and if it's light, you know, he can, you, know, you see he's taking out a lot of them. But he can run around. Um, physics and Halo is a big thing. Pretty much everything you do as far as making games is going to have some form um, of physics in it. And a lot of times physics is used as rules. You know, if you ever use a, there's a program called Game Salad for making video games, you actually have to set in guidelines for the game that you're playing. So, you know, for instance, your, your guy, if you make a character that's going to go up, or he's going to jump, you got to know that he's going to stop eventually, or he's going to keep going. Um, so you have all these sets of rules, basically, that you're actually going to put in, and all of it's due to physics. And the calculations that we've been learning in physics for gravity and um, you know weight and how the how force is coming in, those are all going to be things that I'm going to use pretty much every day um, to get back. Sorry about that. Um, to make video games, I think that Ricochet is going to be the big one because I kind of want to go into first-person shooters, but RPGs is pretty much my standpoint. I love RPGs. Um, but things like Ricochet is really going to be important as far as, you know, how you're going to kill that certain character, how they're going to come about, how you're going to move from certain location to certain location. Um, Gravity is going to play a big role. But I think physics in itself is going to be the main, main <laughs> part that I'm going to be focused on. Because without it, you really can't make a good game. Or you're going to have a game with just one person jumping in the air and then he's going to leave. So that's not very fun at all. Um, and these are all the references that I used. Some of the videos that you saw and everything in here. Um, and all the pictures and everything. So thank you. I hope you enjoyed watching. And I am definitely looking forward to the end of this class. <laughs> thank you.